Hey everyone, um, my name is Gordon Gould. I'm from New Atlantis, which maybe isn't that surprising given it's up on the screen here. Uh, I'm one of the founders of New Atlantis. Uh, David and Wes kindly invited us to come and present here because we've been building on Bacalhau. Um, but I will, this is gonna be a little bit different of a presentation than what you've probably seen so far today. Um, New Atlantis is focused on marine biodiversity, and so one of the things that we're using Bacalhau for is to essentially capture and store huge quantities of marine genetic data um, and put it into the cloud, with our long-term goal is to really enable um, quantification of marine biodiversity assets and apply pricing models to those assets. So how do we do that? Um, this is obviously a very high level and abstracted version of it, but we mix a sort of an economic model with the technical frameworks and underpinned by very strong science to build a scalable open source biodiversity index model. <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't like, I don't know, is anybody here in uh, biology? Like, okay, all right, so one person. So biodiversity just at a sort of very high level is sort of the amalgamation of all the different like creatures and organisms that live within an ecosystem. And we take what's called a functional traits perspective on that, because if you look at the ocean, about 95% of the biomass in the oceans is actually uh, microbial or planktonic. And so you really wanna focus on the microbial aspects of marine ecosystems, and that means really looking at the metabolic pathways that underpin those, which means huge amounts of data. So why marine biodiversity matters, um, three billion people you know, feed out of the ocean, produces half the oxygen in the world, about $30 trillion worth of economic value generated every year. Um, what else do we have? Um, yeah, carbon sinks are obviously super important as well. Um, genetic data from the oceans, about 70% of all pharma drugs on the market right now either came from what's called a natural, pro you know, from genetic resources, a natural product, or were closely or close derivatives thereof. Um, and one of the things that we'll get into later is sort of the sequencing of life in the oceans and why that's a compelling opportunity, both for a company like Bacalhau, uh, as well as for New Atlantis. So I'm sure you all have seen the headlines. There's a lot of bad things going on in the world from a climate and biodiversity perspective. Um, I, get, I probably should put up, there's a, I don't know if you all are aware, there's a 5,000 mile blob of seaweed heading towards Florida at the moment, <laughs> which is, both good and bad, I suppose. <laughs> it's a big carbon sink, a lot of life, but could be a problem for Florida. Um, anyway, so, but the happy news is, is that when, when you actually, um, when you leave the oceans alone, they actually are capable of recovering. So there's a lot of data to show that if you can actually just protect the oceans, they will generally um, you know, regrow their sort of inherent biodiversity and biomass, which is uh, good news. And there's a lot of political momentum uh, around this as well. And so notwithstanding Juan's concerns about surveillance states, which I share with him, I do think in this case that governments actually can produce and provide an important role, essentially helping to create frameworks for uh, international agreement on sharing of data and on d uh, definitions of biodiversity. So we have 196 countries, excluding the US, who just recently signed the UN Convention on Biodiversity uh, late last year. It was a huge deal that that happened. Um, and so you're gonna start hearing more and more about biodiversity as sort of the next step after climate change. Um, climate's super important, but climate is really a measure of the temperature of the planet. And a planet at the right temperature is important, but you kinda also wanna have life on it too. Um, so. We're focused on the living part of it. And one thing to notice here too is that we have a long way to go towards getting to this 30 by 30 goal. So there's gonna be increasing amounts of momentum and market pressure to get towards 30% of the ocean in fully protected areas. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the estimated financing gap for marine biodiversity is put at around $700 billion a year. Uh, that was an estimate that was put out by Hank Paulson, who was the former CEO of Goldman Sachs and Secretary of the U.S. Treasury. So not a, you know, not a flack, basically, a guy who presumably knows what he's talking about. So you're going to see a lot of big unlocks around biodiversity soon. Um, 
So how are we going to actually affect this? And so we believe that the best way to help protect biodiversity is, by, is to make people's financial interest aligned with the protection of that biodiversity. And so what we're doing is we're essentially aggregating uh, data and tool sets from the open marine science academic landscape and building it into a meta model. And if you are a lab or a, a developer that, tech, that provides technology or data, and that data gets you or, or tools get used in the calculation of a marine biodiversity score, you get a prorated piece of every, of every dollar that we generate or every token that we generate. Um, the outputs of the meta model are, you can see there's sort of ESG type reporting, which will be an important piece. Uh, blue carbon, which is, um, you all familiar with carbon credits? So that, so. Blue carbon is just marine-based carbon. You can make estimates on how much carbon is an ecosystem sequestering based on the volume of the biomass and the sort of rate of uh, 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 outflow from there. Um, ultimately, we want to get to marine biodiversity credits that really align ecosystem health with financial gain. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and an interim step is a, a Nagoya-aware bioprospecting. Um, Nagoya is a UN treaty that deals with the um, international handling of genetic assets and to, in order to prevent biopiracy. And so we are focused on building bioprospecting pipelines to look through marine genetic data in a way that helps protect countries um, from you know, not losing out on revenues for resources that were sourced in their waters. Oh, and the people who can participate down the side. MPAs are marine protected areas. Uh, the ho those are generally held by host governments in the various countries where the MPAs are located. Local communities are super important to loop into that because without local community participation, you don't get protection, um, generally speaking. Uh, and um, Contributing scientists and labs are super important, obviously, because those are the people who are building up the technology and the tools. The NGOs are key players, and then investors. So I want to stress this is all a for-profit enter enterprise, because we think that at the end of the day, the profit motive is the most sustainable and consistent way to align people's incentives over time. Asking them to participate to do the right thing is great until it's inconvenient, and then they'll do the self-interested thing, which is a lot more reliable. Um, our constituencies are, I touched on some of these governments, science, local communities, technologies, and NV NGOs and investors. Um, each one of those has their own sort of unique set of requirements, which is, comes back to, again, why tools like Bakliao and IPFS in general um, are very helpful platforms because you can provision as needed and compute as needed. Um, this is our initial swag at a biodiversity index, which happy to sort of talk about it offline if anybody wants to go through what we're actually looking at. Um, and this is the how we do it. So what we do is we go and we take samples of ocean water. We then screen those samples for the DNA and the RNA in the ocean water. And we can see everything from viruses to whales. And it's a super accurate way to actually figure out what's living in different areas of the ocean. And we do this within MPAs at roughly a two-week cadence. So every two weeks, we'll be sampling to build time series over what does the ecology look like in that area. And it's called a metagenome. And we're doing full metagenome analysis, which is also worth pointing out. So we're looking at not just what species are there, but looking at the full genome of each of those species. And that's going to be important because it turns out that 96% of marine species have never been sequenced. Um, so if you think about the biotech industry and the fact that you know, that's a $400 billion a year industry that is largely driven off of genetic resources in many cases or genetically der derived resources, the fact that you've got the vast majority of the ocean has never been looked at um, from a sequencing standpoint is a big market opportunity. Um, it's also particularly true because the ocean is a lot more phylogenetically diverse than on land. So phylum are a way of classifying organisms, um, and phyla occur further up the evolutionary tree than species. There are about 34 animal phyla, and 33 of them live in the ocean, and only 12 live on land. So you have way more genetic diversity in a lot of instances in the oceans that has never actually been seen yet. So how do we apply marine biodiversity? 
So this is kind of a summation of the business model. We take verifiable marine data, uh, which you can see what, what kind of data we're looking at. Uh, marine eat DNA, imaging, biogeochemical, that all gets rolled into a model. We add value-added metrics to that um, by pushing these things through our in silico pipelines where we can start to map, like, here's a new gene, here's an expected function of that gene or protein domain that it can be mapped to. As you can start to put those um, metadata around the raw data, excuse me, you can create um, pricing models for marine data. And those pricing models can then be packed, you can take, for example, uh, gene clusters and start to package them up and sell them to biotech companies en masse. So you can say, okay, we've discovered 100,000 new terp genes that are likely to produce terpenoids. Terpenoids are often very potent anti-cancer molecules, and so, uh, we can save people a lot of time, and we can save them a lot of money, and we can give them ethically sourced, legally clear and valid access to this data. Um, so that's kind of exciting. So bi that's bioprospecting. Um, ecosystem services is just really measuring the health and output of ecosystems, which is super important for both fisheries management and just general biodiversity management, but it's also very important for um, uh, nations who are taking sovereign debt from places like the IMF and the World Bank. Because if they can get, vis if they can get visibility into the stability and resilience of the ecosystems in question, it can lower their cost of capital. And that can translate into tens of billions of dollars of savings for the host, com host uh, com countries. Um, ultimately, biodiversity financial credits, uh, which we talked a bit about before. So constituents and uh, platform requirements. So data sovereignty is going to be a huge issue because countries don't want to have their data sort of leaking out all over the place. They're concerned about data piracy, which is very understandable. That goes to data security. Um, accessibility and reproducibility um, is also key here because in order to have like a uh, widely agreed upon estimates of m marine biodiversity, you really need to make it open source. Um, and Bakley is obviously excellent at that. Um, and scalable compute. So unsurprisingly, we consume a lot of data and will increasingly consume more and more compute over time. So Bakley has been a, a, a fantastic sort of solution for us because it meets a lot of the both social slash decentralized criteria as well as also the technical needs that, that, uh, that New Atlantis needs in order to service our uh, client governments and our investors. So the problem that Bakaliao has also helped us solve is that this is typically what like a bioinformatics pipeline might look like. Um, I don't know if any of you work with bioinformatics, but there are very um, finicky pieces of technology a lot of the time, and they kind of are rather, ra rather janky, um, and stitching them together is often beyond the scope and capabilities of any one lab. So a lab might have spent a lot of time just trying to get something to work, much less sort of expand, extend and, and, and build upon it, and you end up with these sort of very Rube Goldberg looking uh, schematics. Bakaliao has really helped us simplify that, uh, and we've been able to really compress and hide a lot of the complexity of running bioinformatics pipelines um, by building a cloud data lab with the Bakaliao backend. Um, and this is helpful both to us and also to scientists because this sort of batteries included, it just works approach to managing bioinformatics pipelines is great if you want to do the science. It also is very helpful if you have a piece of code or data that you want to contribute because you can now plug it into the, into the meta model and get paid as people passively, you can get paid passively as people use your tools and data sets for whatever calculations are going on. And so this is the high-level schematic, I guess, again, of the uh, sort of, the, the, sort of the, the, the virtuous cycle between sustainable marine protection and how biodiversity assets power regenerative finance and who our constituencies are and how they benefit from them. So I think that's our last slide. Um, so I know this was not like sort of down in the weeds on data engineering the way other stuff has been, but um, I do want to stress that, you know, like this is really the first time something like New Atlantis is even possible because of the open cloud architectures that Bakalia has really enabled um, are key because if you think about it from 
a nation state, a non-US nation state standpoint, they're gonna wanna make sure that their data can't just get turned off. And so things like IPFS and Bakayao really protect and enhance that versus an AWS or something like that where they could just, you know, call, uh, what's his name, Jassy, and be like, you know, <laughs> you're done. So, um, so anyway, uh, so thank you. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions, and hopefully that was clear-ish, so. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs>